Hi everybody, today we're joined by Ryan Susanna to uh, have a bit of a discussion to talk a little bit about what IT departments are looking for from an integration standpoint and how they integrate billing systems uh, into their back end. So welcome Ryan, and uh, I thought maybe we could start off uh, kind of maybe give us a, a little bit of insight into what you're asked for uh, when we're talking to somebody in the sales cycle. Sure, well thanks for having me Tim. Yeah. So we typically sell to upper mid-market and above companies that are uh, very technology-minded, and they're typically going through some sort of digital transformation. They're typically looking to introduce some agility and optionality into their pricing models to market. Could be moving towards usage. Um, they could be rolling on a product-led growth model. Um, but in most circumstances, they're uh, established businesses with established back office systems, and they're looking to get value quick out of investments they make. So. You know, what we used to see three, four years ago is organizations would look to do a holistic change to their systems. They want to forklift everything, billing, ERP, financials, quoting, all in one motion and have a, a massive boil the ocean project to get done. And what we're starting to see in market is organizations have uh, claimed failure, for lack of a better term, on many of those projects. And now they're looking to be a little more nimble. They're looking to uh, make a little more pinpoint pain oriented changes um, integrate those into the existing systems they have. You know, they don't want to retrain all of the thousands of salespeople they have globally, um, operations, revenue, revenue ops, all those different uh, teams. Um, but they do want to enable them with the power and tools to give customers what customers are asking for. And especially in the economic times we see today, customers want to pay for what they use. They want to see value in the transactions they're having. Um, and they want it to be transparent. They want to understand what they're being charged for. They want to understand what value they're getting for that. Um, and if all those things come together, we've we've seen an increased customer experience. We've seen an increase uh, net revenue retention, reduced churn. You know all, all the great things the finance uh, markets are looking for. Right. So I guess you know the you could almost say like the maturity of their backend integration has really changed over the last little while. So kind of looking at more of the best of breed kind of a scenario of being able to meet each of the different departments needs and then finding ways to be able to make those work together. Is that more of the kind of environment that you see? Yep, I would say that's exactly the environment we see. Um, so, you know, really high level example, if I want to elicit a change to a system I have in place, I don't want to have to replace the entire system. So, you know, think modern enterprise architecture, think API forward design, um, the ability to, uh, you know, interject any system anywhere within your back office procedures that, that you need to. Um, and be the key is being able to do it quickly. If you decide today that you want to make an investment for a certain outcome, you'd like to realize the benefits of that outcome in the same fiscal year, right? right. Or, or before the needs of the market actually have changed. Right. And I guess, you know, one of the, you know, if you kind of look at that as, as kind of taking it to the extreme, I'm sure there's scenarios where, um, Basically, they want some systems almost to be invisible, right? You mentioned about being able to have people trained in existing systems and the front ends, maybe where they're taking orders, maybe finance, uh, maybe different departments like that, that have their kind of worlds that they live in. And, and are you seeing scenarios where there would be kind of like building almost running headless in the background, supplying all of the data into those other different systems and receiving it um, versus kind of you know, your traditional someone logging into a big system, being able to go into building and doing those different things along those lines. That's well, that's precisely we we call it headless, headless building or headless usage. So people want to uh, introduce new models, but you know, they're not going to replace Salesforce as their CRM and their quoting, but they do want to see detailed reports of how people are actually using the applications and products and services that they sell right in the CRM, you know, as a, as a salesperson, um, I want to be able to do my research on an account before I actually talk to the account. And I don't want to have five logins to five different systems to go pull that data because I want to spend my time efficient in selling. So um, whether it's, uh, you know, custom ordering portals that channel driven businesses have, maybe they got a big agent, an agent portal, they got a, a thousand agents out there that they've built up globally. Um, these are tech typically not technically savvy people. We've trained them how to use the portal. We don't want to train them how to use a new portal, um, but we do want them to get uh, whatever new functionality or, or permutations of our pricing models enabled there. Um, so I would say the two most common we're seeing is they want uh, headless with CRM as the interface or 
maybe in combination with a headless application that's going to feed some uh, industry specific portals that they, they have may have rolled into their customer base or their or their sales channel. Right. So I guess you mentioned having, you know, I don't want to log into five different systems to be able to find the information that I want. I guess, you know, there's really kind of two approaches then, right, is kind of a really well integrated system uh, that's sharing data across the different systems that you're in. And you can view that data inside those, whether it's Salesforce or others. Uh, but then there's the other approach of doing kind of more of the, the monolithic. We're going to replace everything into one system. So we'll put all the data into that that one area. It's just wondered if you have run into different accounts with one way or the other and which has kind of been a detriment or ones that they, they saw a benefit from. Well, I think everyone wants the comfort of having a single source of truth, right? They don't want to have collisions or dependencies on data that, you know, may contradict each other in different systems. That's going to cause a world of hurt. Um, but they don't want one system performing all the workflow and action on that data. I think that's really what we're seeing, right? We want to have a single source of truth of who our customer is, what contract we have with our customer, how they're using the applications and services. Um, and we wanna use that data to optimize our price model moving forward. We wanna predict upsell events, we wanna predict churn events, um, typically through that usage data. Um, but we wanna have the flexibility to bolt on new uh, applications in that stack that's gonna operate off that single source of truth. So, you know, uh, up and coming, I expect AI is going to be a big one here, right? There's going to be some AI models to predict churn events is probably a fairly well understood example. Um, but people aren't going to move their entire billing system over to one that has the capability. They're going to find at least upper market organizations they are going to find best of breed applications in that space and give them access to that single source of truth, which in itself really is one of these headless implementations. Perfect. Yeah, so I think I think that's a, a lot of great insight into, you know, I really like hearing what we're hearing from our customers and what we're hearing from the market and the way that they want to put those things together and, and being able to share that with uh, with our audience. So just want to say thank you for, for coming in and, and joining today and sharing uh, your knowledge in this area of the industry. Uh, and I hope everybody will join us uh, in other videos in this series. Thank you.